Hi everyone and welcome to video number 24 in Elizabethan England and this one ladies and gentlemen it's all about voyages of exploration. Now at the start of the 20th century the 1900s the British Empire was the biggest empire the world had ever seen. We had conquered about a quarter of the land mass on this planet and we had controlled about a quarter of the population that lived on earth in the early 1900s but britain and in this case we're looking at england they were slow to start spain and portugal during the time of queen elizabeth they had made a start they were ahead of us in going out and exploring and conquering new lands and for Spain in particular, it's helped to make them very, very rich. During the time of Elizabeth, therefore, England wants to join in and they do start to take part in the voyages of discovery, exploration, exploring the world. Now, this video will look at two different questions. First of all, how was it that England was able to get involved in the voyages of exploration? So the how, and the second part of the video, why? Why did they get involved? Well, the first one is the how. There are a few factors, and I've tried to put them together so that it will be easy for you to remember. Now we have something today, ladies and gentlemen, called a sat nav. If you are going on a journey, you can put your sat nav on in the car. Sat nav, there we have it. And that will help you hopefully remember the factors involved in the voyages of exploration. Ships, S, astrolabe for the A, technology for the T, and navigation for the nav. Sat nav. And hopefully this video will explain these factors. Let's start with the ships. Now, to go across the oceans, the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, you needed bigger ships, the galleons. Now, these had been developed. The Spanish and the Portuguese had galleons and England copied the design. Why would you need such a big ship like the galleon? Well, bigger, it's stronger, it's more stable in rough seas, the heavy seas of the ocean. You've got to remember, going across the ocean, sometimes the seas were more than a little rough. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I can't promise there won't be any more jokes, but they'll all be that bad. So, going across the ocean, the seas were rough, they needed a stronger ship, and that was the galleon. Also, if the ship is bigger, it can store more supplies for a longer journey across the oceans of course you needed protection because it was a bit risky out there Warr! there were pirates so you needed protection now on the galleons they had cannons built all along the side of the ship both sides so therefore the galleons gave better protections against piracy there was also new types of sail developed. Now, most of the sails used to be rectangular or square, but at this time, a triangular sail was developed called a lateen, L-A-T-E-E-N. And this triangular sail was made the ship more maneuverable. So if the wind changed direction, the ship could adapt because of these new sails, the Latin. It could change as the wind direction changed, which is very, very useful. Of course, these sails might be quite expensive. So uh, maybe you'd be better off buying them in a sail. <laughs> sorry, sorry. But because they're all different sails, you had to be careful and make sure you didn't get them mixed up. Otherwise you'd have a jumble sail. <laughs> Sorry, that's enough sail jokes. So, the ships, the galleons, the sails meant that now people were able to sail across the ocean. So that's your first factor. 
What about the A, Astrolabe, a new piece of equipment? And it enabled the sailors to calculate the position of the ship more accurately using the sun or the stars. Now they had to know obviously where they were. So this new piece of technology, the astrolabe, made them more precise. That's important. Beforehand, ships would not stray too far from the land because they need the land to see where they were. But now they can go right across thousands of miles of ocean because they can use the astrolabe to find out where they were. So that's a very important piece of kit. It's a new feature, the astrolabe. It's an example of the T, technology. Now I've also, I've already mentioned better ships, better sail design, the astrolabe, but also they were becoming much more precise and much more accurate because they were getting better compasses showing true north and magnetic north. They were getting better at maths. In the Elizabethan period, there was a man called Sir John Dee, and he did some work on the compass to make magnetic north much more apparent. And the sailors needed this again for precise location. So the technology is getting better. Also, of course, the printing press. When Sir Francis Drake went on his voyage round the world, which I'll talk about in my next video, he was able to use books from the Spanish and the Portuguese sailors that had already been. So he was able to use their stuff, use their experience. In 1561, The Art of Navigation, a book by Cortes, was translated into English and the English sailors were able to use it. So technology is playing a part, the T. What about the last one, the navigation? Well, we've already looked at the astrolabe. We've already looked at the idea of the compasses, but there's a third point here, and it's to do with maps. 1569, Gerardus Mercator produced a very famous map, Mercator's map. And on it, for the first time, we've got the lines of latitude and longitude. Again, it's making things far more accurate for the sailors. The, the maps that they started to use then were far more realistic. And because they got the printing press, once one map has been drawn, they can print copies of that instead of having to hand draw other copies as they used to before, which sometimes made mistakes. So the maps also play a part in better navigation. I suppose you could say, at last, they're heading in the right direction. At last, at last. <coughs> Sorry, terrible. So there we have the reasons, the factors which explain how England was able to get involved in the voyages of discovery. Sat nav. Hopefully that will help you remember it. But what about the why? Why did England want to do it? Why did England desperately want to get involved in the voyages of exploration? Have you got any ideas? Hopefully, the first idea that popped into your head was money. Getting rich. Remember, Spain was the wealthiest country on the planet. And one of the reasons why Spain was so wealthy, the silver, the gold mines from the Americas, sugar cane and tobacco, bringing stuff back, spices to Europe and selling them, all from the new lands that they discovered in the Americas. And basically, England wanted a slice of the cake. They wanted some of that action. They wanted to increase their trade, sell more. If you remember, England had been in conflict with Spain, particularly there had been trouble in the Netherlands. England had used to sell loads and loads of its wool through Antwerp. Well, that had stopped. So the woolen trade was declining. Therefore, England needed new markets. It needed to sell elsewhere. 
And the only way they could do that was by sailing out and finding these markets. So, for example, they're trying to move to Russia, India, and, of course, across the Atlantic Ocean to the Americas. And that led to exploration. They were in conflict with Spain. Spain was their enemy. And they thought, right, well, we can attack them. Remember the idea of being a pirate? Aha! OK, let's go and get their stuff. That's what they wanted to do. If you remember, there was a ship, the Cacafuego, which was attacked, I think, by Drake. OK, we'll look at that more in the next video. They wanted to bring the Spanish wealth to England. Now, we've heard about Drake. Another man, John Hawkins, he also got involved. And this man did something in the 1560s which was going to have a huge impact on England over the next hundred or so years. He got involved in the slave trade, the triangular trade from England or Europe down to West Africa, across to the Americas, and then back to England and Europe in a triangle, the triangular slave trade. 1562, he did it first, went to Africa, got some slaves, went across to America, sold the slaves. He repeated it in 16, 1564. And both times he made a huge profit. When he sold the slaves to America, what did he put on his ship to bring back? Ginger, pearls, hides, skin of animals, which he could then sell over in England. There was no hiding it. He made a huge profit. And that then set the sale, set the stage, sorry, for other people to get involved. And it helped make England a very, very rich country. So Hawkins and the slave trade is all linked to money. Why else did England get involved? Well, they wanted to spread their ideas. They wanted to spread their influence across the world. The Pope, Roman Catholic, at the time, he had said to the Jesuit priests, go and spread the Catholic faith. And they did. They went across. The Spanish, remember, were Catholics. And they tried to spread the Roman Catholic faith where they landed on the ships. Well, the English said, well, we need to do that. But we need to spread Protestantism to counter the Spanish, to counter the Pope against him. So that was one of the reasons they wanted to spread their ideas, their religion, their Protestant faith. They also had this idea that somehow they wanted to go and civilize other people, civilize other nations. Now, there's a man called Hakloyd and he wrote a book. Now, for us today, it seems a bit strange. But at the time, many, many people, well, most people believed this sort of thing. It was the duty of the English to go and civilize these other groups of people. Here's a quote from his book. All savages, notice that word, people in other lands, savages. All savages, as soon as they begin to taste of, ci of civilization, will take marvelous delight in any garments like a shirt, a gown, or a cap. And he's basically saying there, we are civilized, they are savages, we need to go and bring our way of life, our civilization, to make their lives better. And that was a strong feeling at the time. So that was another reason why England got involved in the voyages of exploration. Final point. The English sailors, they were good sailors. They were good, they experienced. Some of them had been smugglers before, but they knew what they were doing. They saw the chance here of a regular wage. Remember the increase in poverty in Elizabeth's time. So some people thought, right, here's a chance for me to get a regular wage. Some people were attracted by the idea of it being a great adventure. Wow, I want to go off and have some fun. Well, hey, not my idea of fun, but it was theirs. So the English had a group who were able to go on these ships with Drake or Hawkins or Raleigh. Those three men, 
and others were very good leaders. They could motivate, they could bring their men with them. The men would die for them. So there was a group of sailors there ready and willing and able to go on these voyages of exploration. So there we have it. I've looked at the how, satnav, and I've looked at the why, money, trade, spreading ideas. What could they ask you in the exam? Well, here's one. Describe two features of technology helping the voyages of exploration. Well, what could you use? The astrolabe, the latine sail, the galleon, the maps, the compass, any of them. Any two will get you full marks there if you explained it. Hopefully you could using this video. What about a more challenging question? What about this one? The main reason for the voyages of exploration was to increase England's wealth. How far do you agree with that? Well, yes, increasing the wealth was a big reason and you'd have to explain why and how that was done. Stealing of the Spanish, Hawkins and the slave trade. Okay, but you could also introduce other reasons. They give you two other factors in that exam question. Relations with Spain, developing trade. You could talk about how the trade, the woolen trade in Europe had declined, so we needed new markets. You could talk about conflict with Spain. So can you see how hopefully stuff in this video would prepare you nicely for a question on the voyages of exploration. As ever, I hope it's been useful. Our next video, I can't wait. Sir Francis Drake sailing round the world. Where does he go? What does he do? How significant and important was it? Oh, I can't wait to share it all with you. So, I'll speak to you soon. All the best now. Thank you.